Learn from this IELTS Band 9 candidate fluency, vocabulary, and coherence on the topics of dancing, an important building, the Odisha State Museum, and talking about important places for part 3. Let's begin! Welcome to the speaking section of the IELTS exam. My name is Adrian. I will be your examiner for this part of the test. And I'm recording this for clerical purposes. We're conducting this exam in Bhupaneshwar. Let's begin. May I see your identification? Sure. This is my passport that I use for the registration. What is your full name? My given name is Ashrita and my family name is Nayak. Please call me by my given name, Ashrita. Okay, Ashrita. For part one, I will ask you a couple of questions to get mm -hmm. to know you better and some questions on a general topic. Where do you live? I live in the capital city of Odisha, Bhubaneswar, in a two-bedroom apartment near the Mahanadi River Banks with my family. What do you like about your home? I like that it's near to my school and many amenities. It saves a lot of time so that I can focus on my studies and hang out with my friends during weekends. Let's talk about dancing. Do you like dancing? Yes, I love dancing. I've been dancing since I was a little girl. I think it's a perfect way for me to socialize and exercise with my friends. I was just dancing yesterday at school. How often do you dance? I dance almost every day, be it for fun at a party or the club. We meet up every day. I dance at least an hour or so each day. Who do you usually dance with? I usually dance with my dance troupe. There are 18 of us and we are quite close. I've been dancing with these girls since I was six years old. We dance at a club next to my home, 10 minutes by foot. Where do you go to dance in your neighborhood? I also dance at my school after classes, which is just five minutes the opposite direction to the club. Have you ever performed a dance in front of an audience? Yes, I have. I have performed at various dance recitals over the years, to which people have been attending from over a dozen to hundreds. Just last month, we have performed at a friend's wedding and we put a bit of a show for 200 or so attendees. If you could learn any kind of dance, what would it be? That's a great question. Uh, given the chance, I think I would love to learn Latin dancing, to be specific, salsa. I've been intrigued by this rhythm dance for a while now and it would be great to add it to my repertoire. That is the end of part one. We will now continue with part two. For those high, high band scores, you need to introduce complex grammar as early as possible, ideally from the very first questions of part one. In this case, when the examiner asks, do you like dancing, the candidate immediately responds with a present perfect progressive, saying, I have been dancing since I was a young child. It's this kind of grammatical range and accuracy that will earn you high scores. You can practice practice different types of complex grammar in your course on our website. Make sure to go through the bonus writing and grammar section of your materials. Even more importantly, make sure to reflect complex grammar when the question is either a present perfect or a conditional. Like when the examiner asks, have you ever performed in front of an audience? This candidate cleverly uses the present perfect right away, simply saying, yes I have. I have performed in front of smaller and bigger audiences, then includes quantification, meaning numbers, a few people like three or four and up to a couple hundred people in a wedding. Then when she's asked in a conditional, if you could learn any kind of dance, what would it be? She responds with a conditional. Given the chance, I would love to learn salsa. Ideally, you're always paying attention to the grammar used by the examiner and then reflecting that. Why? Because the examiner is purposefully checking to see if you can catch that kind of grammar and then use it in your response. Native English speakers will do this naturally. When a Canadian, a British, or an American hear a question in the present perfect, they will naturally say, yes I have, or no I haven't. Make sure to practice this before your test. You can do this again on our website with other students using the student partner speaking function. It's absolutely free. When ready, you can sign up for a full mock speaking exam, clicking the speaking interview practice button to get a band score estimate and tips on how to improve. Now, on to part two. For this part, I will show you some questions. You will have one minute to read these. Please do not 
touch the question paper. You can take notes in the one minute time if you wish, and then you will have one to two minutes to speak. Mm -hmm. I will tell you when to start, when to stop. Is that clear? Yeah. Talk about an important building in your community. Your one minute preparation time begins now. Your one minute preparation time is up. Please begin speaking. I think a very important building in Bhubaneswar is Odisha State Museum. It is located in the center of the city and it is a large modern building in three stories with beautiful exhibits which display much of the local history. I think the museum is visited by both visitors and locals alike because most Indians know the rich history of Odisha. I have visited the museum a few different times, not only with my family but also from class as a part of an educational trip. There are many amazing artifacts dating back to the Kalinga dynasty, including various carvings and paintings. There are also modern arts uh, from the local customs, dances and paintings. I think the building is very important for the local community because it is a way to share the knowledge of our ancestry with the world. In this way, we can preserve the rich history of the place and save it for our future generations. It also inbuilds a sense of pride within the local community and helps the visitors to respect the local people. If we did not have this state museum, slowly local people would lose their identity and start forgetting our rich history. In this way, they can enrich their experience while helping to maintain this important establishment for generations to come. That is the end of part two. I will take back the questions. Please put the note paper to the side, turn it over, and the pencil as well, and we will now continue to part three. For this cue card talking about an important place in your city, this candidate wisely chooses to talk about the State Museum. She knows lots of information about it, where it's located, what it looks like, who goes there, and what kind of experience a person can have visiting this museum. Importantly, she uses a broad range of detailed and high-level vocabulary. You too must practice understanding this kind of vocabulary. Check the definitions in the video description below so that you can get a high band score when asked to talk about an important place in your city. Try answering this cue card. Send us your response in an mp3 format to this email address and we will give you a band score estimate for free so that you know where you stand and what you need to do to improve. Now, on to part three. For this part, I will ask you some more questions related to the topic of part two. Let's talk about important buildings. What are some buildings that are important for people living in a city? Other than buildings like Odisha State Museum or art galleries or concert halls, I believe schools and government offices are important as these venues aid in education and maintaining the society. Part 3 follows the topic of Part 2, in this case talking about important buildings. Now these questions can be kind of scary because they're very detailed and use some less common vocabulary to test for those higher band scores. What's important is not to panic and to remember that these questions are still kind of typical questions a person would ask about important buildings. Like what are some kinds of important buildings a person may find in their city? Keep your thoughts simple. Think about buildings that you visit like schools, libraries and government offices. If you're not sure what to answer, make sure to buy time. Say, hmm, that's an interesting question. Please give me a moment to think about my answer. Or, hmm, I've never thought about that before. But if you were to ask me, I would say that. Practice these phrases so that you can give your brain some time to come up with a good response. Try answering this question. What are some important buildings in cities? Then try answering this question. How about important buildings in the countryside? Send us your answer to these questions in an mp3 format to earn a badge. Collect three badges from three different videos and earn yourself a 10 minute speaking assessment with a native English speaking tutor for free. Now let's check out the rest of part three and some more strategies.
to watch this full interview and lesson. For over a hundred speaking interview videos, including original practice exams, a fully interactive course, and an app for your phone, visit and join our premium IELTS package at aehelp.com. It's a one-time payment for lifetime access. Use the code DANCE9 for an additional 10% discount. Simply click the link in the video description below. We are an IDP affiliate, a British Council partner, an IELTS test registration center, and I'm a certified British Council agent. We help thousands of students succeed on their exams. Just listen to what this candidate has to say. From Iran today, I got my IELTS test report form with an overall band score of 8. I wanted to thank you and the incredible team of AE Help for the journey we started a few months ago together. I followed your YouTube courses and, of course, the premium material on the website, and I'm quite delighted with the outcome. Thank you. Begin learning for success. Join now. Subscribe to our channel. Click over here. Watch another video. Click right up here. And Click our IELTS Hero to join our premium package and get access to all of our videos, practice exams, and a fully interactive course.